As simple as it is, the Pat's Rubber Legs is one of the most effective stone fly patterns ever created. But over the years, I've been unable to resist tweaking it here and there. The Pat's Plus incorporates a tungsten bead, round rubber legs instead of flexi floss, as well as an enhanced thorax and wing case. The Get It Down Pat's is tied on a jig hook with a slotted tungsten bead, so it tends to get hung up less on the bottom. It also incorporates an extended body to produce the correct proportions for a stone fly. The latest iteration I call the Jiggly Pats takes things a step further by adding an articulated segment to the rear of the fly. Tying a Jiggly Pats is a little more involved than the previous versions, but I feel the added motion is well worth the effort. The foundation for the rear segment of the Jiggly Pats is a size 10 Lightning Strike NH7. The ring eye and the length of the shank are the most important parts here. After getting the hook firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise, load a bobbin with a spool of black UTC 140 denier thread. Dark brown also looks good. Get the thread started on the hook shank behind the eye and after taking a few wraps rearward, snip off the excess tag. Variegated medium sized black and coffee chenille is used for both the rear and front body segments. A card width and a half is enough for each. Once you've cut a length free from the card, strip just a little bit of fluff from one end to expose the string core. Give your bobbin a counterclockwise spin as if you're looking down on it, so the first wrap of tying thread will want to jump rearward and catch the string. Continue binding the chenille to the top of the hook shank all the way back to the start of the bend. Then return your tying thread forward to the initial tie-in point. Small black round rubber legs are used for both the tails and legs of the fly. For the tails, separate out a single strand and fold it in half. Grip it like so to form a half inch long loop. Place the loop on top of the hook shank and take thread wraps to secure it, first behind the eye, then down the shank to the start of the hook bend, making sure the material lands on top of the hook shank. Return your tying thread back to the initial tie-in point. Lift the front loop up and snip it off close. Separate the strands to either side of the hook. Then, pull the chenille up and between them and start taking touching wraps with it up the hook shank until you reach your tying thread. Anchor the chenille with nice tight thread wraps, then snip the excess off close. If necessary, twist the body to bring the tails into correct alignment. Next, snip the tails off to about a full hook in length. Yes, they're longer than on the naturals, but I feel the extra motion adds something to the pattern. Reach for your whip finish tool and use it to do a four or five turn whip finish, then seat the knot well and snip or cut your tying thread free. Although not essential, I like to trim both the top and bottom of this segment to give it a more flattened profile and maybe add a little side taper down to the tails as well. Get hold of your head cement, or here, Sally Hansen hard as nails, and apply an ample drop to the thread wraps at the head of the fly. Store the assembly in a safe place while the adhesive dries. A Lightning Strike JF2 jig hook in size 10 is used for the front portion of the fly. This hook pairs nicely with a 5 seconds of an inch black nickel slotted tungsten bead. Insert the point of the hook into the small hole on one of the beads, then work the bead around to behind the hook eye. Get the assembly firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise. Make absolutely sure that the squared off end of the slot is on the underside of the hook and that the bead rests nicely right behind the back edge of the hook eye. Using the same thread as on the rear segment, get it started on the hook shank at the back edge of the bead. After taking a few wraps rearward, wrap back up to the bead and snip off the excess tag. 0.02 round lead-free wire is used to add weight and to help stabilize the bead on the hook. With the wire still on the spool, insert the bitter end into the slot on the back of the bead and push forward to anchor the bead behind the hook eye. Take five or six tight turns of tying thread to lock the wire in place, then take five or six rearward wraps with the wire behind your tying thread. Hold the wire perpendicular to the shank, then bind it to the top of the hook shank with a couple of tight thread wraps. Next, bring the wire in line with the hook shank, and as you take thread wraps rearward, 
Rock the wire up and down until it breaks, leaving a nice little ramp down to the hook shank. Wrap over top of the wire wraps to further secure them and end with your tying thread at the back edge of the wire. 8 pound Maxima Chameleon leader material is a good choice for connecting the fly's two segments. Cut a 3 inch length free from the spool and get hold of one end. Lay that end of the mono against the near side of the hook so it butts up against the wire wraps and begins securing it to the near side of the hook back to the start of the bend. Then advance your thread forward to behind the wire wraps. Get hold of the now dry rear segment you tied earlier and use a small pair of wire cutters to snip off everything below the end of the shank. Be careful when doing this, as that snipped off piece of hook is very likely to become a dangerous projectile. At the same time, try not to snip off one or both of those beautifully splayed tails. Insert the monofilament on the front segment up through the hook eye on the rear segment. Fold the line over and begin anchoring it to the top of the hook shank with thread wraps. Gently pull on the mono to close the loop down. You want the loop to be fairly small, but not so small as to restrict the movement of the rear portion of the fly. Once you're happy with the loop size, snip the mono off, even with the back edge of the bead. Take thread wraps to anchor it really well to the top of the hook shank, ending with your tying thread just forward of the start of the hook bend. An ample amount of super glue, or here fly tire Z-Men, applied to the thread wraps and allowed to sink in, followed by thread wraps over top, will help to ensure nothing comes unraveled or pulls free. Snip off another card width and a half segment of chenille, and as before, remove just a small amount of fluff from one end. Anchor that end at about the midpoint of the hook shank and bind the chenille to the top of the shank all the way back to the base of the mono loop. Then, wrap your thread forward to the midpoint of the hook shank. Take touching wraps with the chenille forward until you reach your tying thread. Use the thread to firmly anchor the chenille. Continue taking thread wraps between the chenille and the back edge of the bead to create a reasonably smooth area for tying down more rubber leg material. As before, strip a single strand free and fold it in half, but here locate the midpoint of the doubled over strand. Place this midpoint on top of the hook shank at the back edge of the bead and take a couple of turns of tying thread to lightly secure it. This will allow you to separate the strands to either side of the fly. You can then take thread wraps to firmly bind the material down all the way back to the chenille, then end with your thread at the back edge of the bead. Start taking wraps with the chenille to fill in the area behind the bead. Really pack the wraps in there. Then anchor the chenille with three or four very tight wraps of tying thread and snip the excess off close. Make sure the rubber leg material is correctly aligned on either side of the fly. Then pull the front loop back and take wraps of tying thread in front of it but behind the bead. Reach for your whip finish tool once again and use it to do a five or six turn whip finish, seat the knot really well, and snip or cut your tying thread free. Snip the rubber leg loop at its midpoint. Make sure everything is correctly aligned, then snip all four legs off so they look about like this. Apply an ample drop of head cement to the thread wraps at the back edge of the bead. Trim both the top and underside of the fly to flatten it just a bit. Make sure that that rear segment swings freely. And that's the Jiggly Pats. You can see here just how much motion this fly has underwater.